brothers and sisters and friends, and I see some enemies. In fact, I think we'd be fooling ourselves if we had an audience this large and didn't realize that there were some enemies present. And I guess he put a sign up, and when he put the sign up, the borough sent me a notice saying that I needed to cease and desist using that as a basically as a place of business. So they're accusing you of using that as a place of business? Well, they know it's him. I mean, they said your tenant well, okay. has done such and such. Okay. But they sent it to so me and said that they were going to find. They, what are they accusing you of? Some code, something, something, running a business, un, unauthorized use of the property, I believe is what it said. All right. So they're accusing you of running a business or are they accusing you of him running a business? I, I'm having yeah, a little trouble yes, figuring that's out what exactly what it is. They're accusing me of allowing him to use the property. Okay. Now, just to be clear, everybody in the world is allowing him to use the property in that man, right? Okay. Anybody who is not putting a gun to his head and telling him to stop is, in fact, allowing him to use the business as, as, as that, right? Well, they're saying that because I'm the property owner, it's my responsibility to, to do what? To cease and desist. To, to enforce their code, right? <laughs> yeah, basically, yes. Which is well, part of the reason why I was. I mean, yeah, that's so what I'm angry. trying to make clear. Yeah. I, I'm just trying. Hey, when, once you make their accusations more and more clear, it gets more and more absurd. That's what I'm kind of pointing out here. I love it. Seriously. Okay. And okay. that is exactly what it is. They are okay. trying to get so, me to enforce their code. So here's, and they're trying to be vague about it because that's how they live. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They love vague. But if you actually tell us, you know, you get it clear to the point where it's like, okay, so you're trying to punish me for not enforcing your code that I can't prove applies to him. So do you have any evidence for me that your code applies to me and that I can apply this code to him? I'm you, sure they're going to the absurdity. Yeah. Okay. Now, and here's the thing is, is, uh, you know, I, I'm sorry. I, I want to make sure that I'm acting ethically with my tenant, right? Do you have any evidence that this code applies to us, me in that one respect and him in the other? I have a question. Well, I mean, I mean, you, you kind of need to get the first baby steps, right? You need to break this up into the baby steps. You need to figure out what they're actually accusing you of doing and or not doing, right? So this is uh, probably, I mean, it sounds like an, an accusation of non-doing. Right. A so failure. You to. didn't stop him. You didn't stop him from doing something. Are you Challenge. required to stop him from doing something that he has the right to do? Yes or no? Okay. Okay. If he, if, 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 if this is something he doesn't have the right to do, you know, do you have any evidence that he doesn't have the right to do it? Well, we and have the code. code. Okay. So you're, you're saying that this code applies to him and I'm supposed to enforce this code and require him to obey this code that I don't have any evidence applies to him. Do you have any evidence that applies to him? It's not even to you. It's to him. You're in a very unique situation. <laughs> they're not coming after him, are they? They're coming after yeah. you no, to enforce they're coming after me. the code. Right. They're, they're coming after you to enforce their code upon him. But if I wouldn't, if I wouldn't get him to stop, they were going to find me. Now, they withdrew because he took down his sign, but the, uh, okay. the I still want to be able to challenge them. For failure to enforce their codes when you have no reason to believe it's applicable. Right. Unless you have evidence that it is. So you're doing your due diligence is all. It's like, okay, well, you know, just to make sure that I'm not liable to him for interfering with his rights, I need the prosecutor to provide evidence for three things. One, that the code applies to you. Two, that the code applies to him. And three, that you're required to code, apply the code to him. Well, let me ask you this question. There, if when I ask him if the code applies, he, no, that's not what, what you're asking. Do? Okay, that's what do what I you're ask? Asking at all. Can you back up and ask? Uh, okay, okay. So let's get rid of the pronouns for first. Uh, what do you mean by him? Who? Who him? 
the uh, well, what I was thinking about doing was calling the codes officer who levied the cease and desist order. Okay, the one who him. accused you, the one who yeah. who 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 uh, uh, made the threat. Yes. Okay. And so that that he's the one that levied the threat, so he's uh, to me a good one to communicate with, right? Yes. Him and possibly the mayor. I think I could get in touch so, with him if after no, I. No, the mayor isn't the one prosecuting you. I mean, you know, you might ask him for his advice, but you couldn't hold him to his answers, right? <clears throat> How would you hold the he mayor? Would be like the supervising you... officer. I, of the I don't know that that's true. I okay. don't know that that's true. I would first okay. get that as a confession from them. You're presuming a whole lot of shit here, right? Uh, yes, absolutely. So. If you ask somebody if codes apply, okay, you're asking them for their opinion on an issue because you're not asking for a factual thing. If you ask okay. somebody if these shoes are, if these, you know, uh, if the mass of this bowling ball is five pounds, you're asking a factual question. If you ask somebody if this bowling ball is pretty, you're asking them an opinion. So if you're asking somebody if codes apply, it is not. It's not something you could ask a physicist, right? No, but I thought Mark pre preferenced that he got their admission that the codes apply just because they're physically. Ah, okay. Such so, so that's the nuanced difference. Let's get to that. Okay. So, right. okay. First, the question is, or first, the confession is, is it your position that these codes apply merely because I'm located wherever? So the difference between asking somebody, do these codes apply? Okay. Yes. And they give you an opinion, yes or no. Okay. And the difference between saying, is it your position that these codes apply merely because I'm located in blah, blah, blah? Yes, that is my position. You're not asking them for the answer. You're asking them if it's their position. You're not requesting a judgment for them. You're requesting them to state what their opinion about something is. It's, it's, it, I know it's a, a hair's difference. Okay, if you ask somebody, should I, should I do something? Okay. You're asking their advice if you say to them, is it your position that this should be this way? You're asking them not, for, not to make a judgment about the situation, but rather to communicate their opinion to you. And that's, that's where the difference is between saying, do you have jurisdiction versus is it your opinion or is it your position that you have jurisdiction? Now, then you move on from that question, you know, with Mark's stuff, for instance, into, okay, that is your position. Do you have any evidence that this is true or that this position is based on, you know, whatever you can kind of phrase it as, do you have any evidence of that position? You know, that that's true. That kind of cinches it up. You know, in the two questions, it's like, what is, is, it, is it your position at ABC? And then, do you have any evidence that that position is true? Instead of asking them, do you have jurisdiction? It's a very, it's an important distinction, but I understand where it's easily confused. All right. Now, what if so, they say that it's not because of where I am, but because of where... My residence that okay. I own is fair is enough. Property. Fair enough, but they're not trying to sue the residents; they're trying to sue you. Correct? It was targeted or, to or me, not. but they could easily shift that. Okay. Slippery little guys. Okay, so fair enough. You want to adjust? Is it your position that you have jurisdiction over me because of the location of my property? The physical location of my property. Okay. All right. Slight adjustment. No big deal. And you can say because of me and or my property, if you want. I don't care. <laughs> right? Makes the same point. So is it your position that you have jurisdiction over me because of the location of me and or my property? Yeah. Okay. Do you have any evidence that that's true? Not any evidence of where the property is but rather that the location of the property 
some through some means leads to it being true that they have jurisdiction. Right. Now here's here's the, here's the thing. We're trying to draw a sting, distinction between a factual truth and an opinion. Okay. The point is that a, a bowling ball being pretty is not a factual statement ever. Do you have any proof that a bowling ball is pretty? Um, there, it, that's a nonsense statement to say because it's not a physical property. It's a it's a it, it, it's it's a opinion, right? It's just arbitrary. But they okay. want to pretend that the idea that they have jurisdiction is based upon facts. Now, it could be. It could be based upon facts. It could be based upon the fact that, ah, uh, you signed up for the military and it's a military jurisdiction. Okay? Okay. The factual basis is that you gave a signature, that signature was communicating an agreement that that you know, agreement was voluntary and a meeting of the minds and satisfied all the, you know, all the elements of a contract. And that you have an appreciation of contracts and that this jurisdiction was part of that contract and that thus A, B, C, D, E leads to jurisdiction. You know, you've broken it down without any big, huge question mark in the middle, right? But, in, but, but they want to say, okay, your property is located uh, within the circle, thus jurisdiction. It's like, okay, what's the thus part? Where there's in betweens. Let's let's focus in and, and explain the question mark. You know, and that would be through clarifying questions. Correct. But what if they don't want to clarify those questions, like with in the role play where he? Of course, they don't want to. That is exactly what they don't want to do. All right. So here's a principle. If I make a statement to you, an assertion. And you say, oh, well, that's uh, vague. Let's go ahead and clear that up. Um, what is the specific meaning of that you mean to this, A or B? And I say, fuck you. I'm not clarifying jack and shit. <laughs> You've been informed. See, here's the problem. If I'm communicating, if I inform you of something, and then I refuse to clarify that information, I've not informed you. It's been made clear that I failed to inform you because I failed to be specific on a, spe on, a on an issue that you showed how it's vague and that, that, that there's two possible things that I could be communicating. You've asked a question that demonstrates that I could have two possible meanings. As a result, my communication becomes a non-communication. Okay. I, I've said A or B. Okay. Okay. What have you told me? Have you told me A? Nope. I, I told you A or B are, are true. Okay. Have you told me A is true? No. Nope. Have you told me B is true? No. Nope. You haven't told me anything. I, you, you've made a non committed position, right? <laughs> yeah. So, so the question is the, the whole point is that a, that a vague statement, which then leads to a clarifying question. Because that shows that you don't know which one it is. Now is not is no longer a notice, basically. Because you've notified something somebody of something fuzzy. And they've pointed out that you could be notifying them of one of two things, and they failed to get make clear what they were notifying you of. So uh, I hereby notify you that either you or the guy sitting next to you broke the law. So, okay. Why would I presume that means anything? You know? I was like, well, I notified you. It's like, okay, just for clarification, do you mean I broke the law? Uh, I'm not going to answer that. <laughs> it's dishonest and disingenuous, and obviously someone's hiding something, right? Well, how do you, I mean, if it's that obvious, <laughs> how do you yeah. call them? I mean, can you just blatantly call them out on that? 